Good morning. Thank you for joining our Sunday School lesson today. And this is a very special day in the life of our church, Pentecost Sunday. And we're going to be talking a good bit about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit as we get into our lesson. Uh, and uh, just wanted to remind you that Pentecost is the celebration of our church's birthday. Some two th over 2,000 years ago, uh, it started at Pentecost. And we date Pentecost Sunday, 50 days from Easter. So you'll have an idea of Penta means five, doesn't it? In the, you know, uh, Roman language. So, and maybe Greek as well. And uh, so we'll be talking about the day of Pentecost in our lesson today a good bit and uh, just see what the Holy Spirit did in order to get the church started off on a good start. Uh, but before we get into the lesson, and since we are starting a new series, and this is the uh, summer edition of the series that uh, we're starting today, uh, I thought it would be best if we look at the general theme for what all of our lessons in the book uh, will be pertaining to. The one word that describes the main theme is transform. And what does that word mean, change? And we know the change agent uh, for us in ourselves as well as our church is the Holy Spirit. And uh, when we thank Christ for sending the Holy Spirit so uh, the Holy Spirit can be in everyone, not limited by space uh, or any other means. And everybody has an opportunity uh, to experience the Holy Spirit uh, in this form. So it is very important that we understand uh, just exactly what change takes place. And we're gonna be looking at that as well as uh, why it took place. So it says the summer, this summer our Bible lessons follow the theme transform, as I mentioned, change. As Christ is followers, we are gifted with Christ is peace and called to be peacemakers. These lessons explore how God's spirit endows, equips, empowers us to reach out to others. And since we're called to be peacemakers, we certainly need to be endowed with a, uh, an agent, which is the Holy Spirit, in order for us uh, to act that way. Remember what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount is that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So uh, the unit that we're gonna be in, which includes the first four lessons, uh, also has a theme and of it, it is the fruit of the Spirit, which is generated by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we're gonna be looking uh, at the fruits of the Spirit as Paul gives them to us. And Paul's familiar metaphor of fruit teaches us that the Holy Spirit endows us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, which we just studied in our last lesson in our other series, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in order to empower us to reach out to others through acts of mission and peacemaking. The lessons in this unit help us understand how these gifts transform us, change us, and how we can use them in transforming the world. What would it be like? What would it be like without violence, corruption, selfishness, hate, conflict, jealousy, animosity, and division. Wouldn't it be a better world? The gifts of the Spirit transform these that I've just mentioned into a place where there would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the Holy Spirit in us makes this possible by us becoming and producing these attributes as was started on the day of Pentecost over 2,000 years ago. And this is still taking place uh, at, this, at this time. 
So as we get into our lesson for today, it's receiving the Spirit's gifts. And the main gift that we've been blessed with through Christ is the Holy Spirit. And I just want to bring us up to date of where we are before we get into this scripture that I'm fixing to read. And I want to reach back to right after the resurrection. And Jesus uh, appeared to many uh, and visited many others, the resurrected Jesus now, for 40 days to affirm his resurrection to others uh, as well as giving them information they needed to move forward in the days to come. And he made it sure that he met with his disciples and other followers to let them know that they were to go into all the world and spread the gospel. But before they could do this, they had to be blessed with the Holy Spirit. So he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait in a particular place. And there were some 120 of them and that uh, to watch and pray, good, good advice for all of us is to watch and pray for the Holy Spirit to come to them so that they could start the ministry of the church. So we look at our lesson today and, and our, our scriptures from Acts 1 and 2 and selected verses as well. And uh, the purpose statement is to recognize the role of the Holy Spirit in preparing for ministry in the world. I think it'd be good before we just get started here is to remember Jesus being involved with the Holy Spirit before he started his ministry. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, as he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And God said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Then what did Jesus do? He went into the wilderness. He was able to survive the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil because of the Holy Spirit being with him. And then he started his ministry for three years uh, of going about uh, bringing the gospel uh, to everyone. So let's keep that in mind. The Holy Spirit acts in different ways on us. It came to Jesus like a dove in a quiet way. Uh, we're gonna find this is much different than Pentecost. It's gonna involve many more people than just one person, isn't it? So let's go to Acts 2 is where our selected verses are from. When Pentecost day arrived, now Pentecost had already been established as a festival day. There were three main festivals in Jerusalem that the Jewish people celebrated and they would come from all different regions, speaking all different languages, different, different uh, nationalities. And what, this was one of the, the days that they celebrated and it was called Pentecost Day or Feast of Weeks and it was celebrating a harvest day. That God had been so good to them with the harvest that uh, they had received there. So a Pentecost in the Old Testament is that Pentecost, okay? The Holy Spirit's going to redefine it for us as Christians. So it says, when the Pentecost day arrived, they were all together. We're talking about the followers of Christ, his disciples, and there were 120 of them, so to speak. They were all together in one place, as I mentioned. They were told to do this. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames. Can you imagine? That's one reason I wore red today. This is emblematic of the flames taking place when the Holy Spirit is, is about to be on them. Individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just some, all and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And they could understand one another. They were all different, speaking different languages, but the Holy Spirit caused them to speak in tongues, And but they could understand one another by speaking in tongues. And then 
We look at Old Testament scripture that prophesies this five to 600 years before of all this going to take place. And Joel was the minor prophet that made this prediction. And, and Peter refers to it, this scripture, and, and puts this in uh, this scripture. And it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is unique. This didn't happen in the Old Testament. This is something new that everyone uh, will have access to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was exalted to God's right side. This is at the ascension and received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. So God the Father had blessed Jesus with the Holy Spirit, and guess what Jesus did? He poured out this Spirit, and you are seeing and hearing the results of his having done so. And Peter replied. Now Peter, Peter is preaching to the crowd. There's more people, a lot of people there are there for Pentecost other than just these disciples. Peter replied, change your hearts and lives. Each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. So how did the people respond to Jesus? I mean, to Peter's bold sermon which is not in this scripture, but if you go and read Acts 2 and 3, you'll find this in scripture. More than 3,000 of the people that came for, for Old Testament Pentecost turned their lives over to Christ. And you wouldn't believe what happened. They all loved one another. They were speaking in tongues and understanding one another. And they were giving away everything they have to the needy and to others that didn't have anything. It was a time of uh, peace and joy of what the Holy Spirit and unity uh, does to us uh, when the Holy Spirit comes into us. And the key verse is they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's go to our Lord in prayer if we will as we get into this lesson. I do, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for you and all your many blessings, especially blessing us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit of love so that we can go out and change the world is to be more like what you intended for the kingdom to be here on earth. In your name we pray, amen. So Pentecost was a, a, a national celebration in the life of the Jewish people. Uh, as I mentioned before, and that's the Old Testament Pentecost. One of Israel's major feasts, as I've already mentioned there, and just thousands and thousands of people would assemble in Jerusalem uh, for this great event. And as I mentioned, they, they were, it mentions here in our book, there were Jews coming from Arabia, Egypt, Parthian, and the Roman uh, empires, and speaking certainly in different languages, but once the Holy Spirit arrived, that all changed. It would be on the day of Pentecost that God would do a new thing in the life of the people. I think God was waiting for a crowd to get there for this to happen uh, in order for it to bless as many people that were willing to accept Christ as Savior. Uh, these disciples were all together in one place, as I had mentioned earlier there, these 120 believers waiting Patience uh, is what it took because several days took place uh, as they waited and prayed in order for the Holy Spirit to descend on them to go forward and preach the gospel. 
So we see the Holy Spirit's advent coming suddenly, unexpectedly, like a howling wind, appearing like individual flames of fire alighting on each one and everyone. And I think you're going to see this time and time again, that the Holy Spirit is for everyone and not just for a select few. And it said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. God's supernatural way of establishing free and open communication among the nations uh, for the good of all. Isn't unity a great thing that we don't need anything to divide us, that the Holy Spirit, when it's involved in us, expects for unity to take place? It says the power of, of the Spirit is seen in the ability to transform and empower believers to live victoriously in the world. It is a power that is available to each of us today, isn't it? We have a lot to bring into the world as Christians. Everyone, regardless of their background, race, gender, was endowed by the Spirit to be worthy of purpose and ministry to the world. Old Pentecost was the supernatural establishment, the New Testament, uh, Pentecost was the supernatural establishment of a family with the specific mission to go into all the world and proclaim healing and hope. That's the church. This was the start of the church. So let's keep in mind may the, our, for our church, may the church forever say, come Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this house. And I think if you've heard the hymn, of the song, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, you would experience the Holy Spirit as that song is being sung if you really want to be blessed where there's unity and people are thinking of only in terms of how good we can be and helping one another. I think that sets the tone for the Holy Spirit to come and, and be in everyone's heart that has accepted Christ. Uh, a historical promise, as we've mentioned before here, you know, the excitement of what happened in that house spilled over into the city. And when they saw and heard the disciples from different nations and dialects freely communicating with one another, they knew again that something strange and mysterious had taken place. So these 120 were looked at and thinking by the thousands that had come for old Pentecost uh, they had looked uh, around and saw these people just uh, being blessed with love, peace, and unity, and they were thought to be maybe drinking some wine and, and being drunk, but that wasn't the case. And this is why Peter stood up boldly. Now, we're talking about the Peter that ran from the crucifixion, the scared Peter, the guilty Peter. Now Peter's been filled with the Holy Spirit. And what does he do? He stands up boldly. And this was Peter's first sermon. And he told the crowd two things. This is just part of his sermon. If you want to read his sermon, go to Acts 2. First, these disciples were not drunk, he told them. <laughs> they were experiencing the Holy Spirit, that who Jesus was and how they could access it. And Peter told the crowd also, second, them what had just happened was the fulfillment of God's historical promise to the people of God. Uh, he quoted Joel, who lived five or 600 years prior to this time, who was a prophet. So the people were sold, uh, many, many of them were sold on Peter's message that God had promised Israel uh, that this would take place. So God's love and promises are not bound by culture or time. This promise of eternal hope and peace is extended uh, to us today as it, much as it was then. So in short, our future is as bright as God's promise. Hallelujah to the Lamb for the Holy Spirit to enact of uh, us the fruits of, of the Spirit because it's been poured out to all. And what does it take for us to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? is for us to accept Christ, repent, and accept Christ as our Savior, and then go forward in, in reading Scripture and prayer and carrying the gospel to the world. So this gift, see, was 
uh, a new thing because up until this time in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit only appeared to a select few. And some of these were Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, David, Mary, and Jesus, as I've already explained, came to the Holy Spirit came to him like a dove. We don't know exactly how the Holy Spirit's going to uh, work in us, but it's going to work in us uh, if, if we've uh, committed our lives to Christ and asked for the Holy Spirit to activate uh, all the fruits that I've just mentioned previously at the beginning of the lesson. And but this will work in us and change us and in turn, then we will it will change others and bring this and expand God's kingdom uh, out into the world there. So we have a, a bright future, don't we? By having the Holy Spirit in us, we're going to produce love, peace, and unity and bring this to the world as it's been going on for some over 2,000 years. So as believers, Pentecost is the evidence that whatever life presents us with, our future is bright. We have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit assures us that the best is yet to come. The kingdom of God is at hand. It is evolving. It is changing. Uh, because we're changing and to make others have this opportunity to change as well. The patriarch David even knew that this day would come. Jesus would suffer and die on the cross only to return to the Father and receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. We wonder why Jesus had to return and ascend. He didn't want to be limited by flesh and blood. He wanted the Holy Spirit to be available to everyone to come into each other's lives. So what these persons had seen and heard now called them to repent at Pentecost, be baptized and freely receive God's gift. The Holy Spirit is made to everyone. I want to reemphasize that. Who repents and accepts Jesus as Lord of their lives. The early disciples provided us with the pattern of praying and waiting before God. And their assurance that God would do a new thing in the lives of the faithful was based on Jesus' command to the disciples to assemble themselves together in a common purpose. And they also heard and believed the prophetic words of Joel and other Old Testament prophets. God still speaks to us today, doesn't he? To those who have ears to hear and hearts to receive, that the Holy Spirit will prevail. This is our assurance that the righteous will prevail in a world so often marked by evil and wickedness. So I think it would be good. The book suggests, and I think it's a good suggestion. Hopefully you can do this. Take time this week to practice the presence of God. As I said, if you have a chance to listen to that song, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, that would be good if it's in prayer or in scripture reading or what. Uh, experience, uh, it, go the, the presence of God in anticipation and expectation of experiencing God's common and empowering spirit. Prepare your heart for the unexpected. Remember, the Holy Spirit empowers us and it can come in different ways and different forms. Uh, so be expected something uh, maybe to surprise you and uh, experience something new. So let's go to our Lord in prayer as we conclude this lesson. Holy Spirit, Bring afresh upon us that we may be your people and share God's message of love and hope to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you and have a good week.